my friends. Whoops, I almost restarted things again. Let's get the video up. Let's get to the right scene. Let's figure it out. Hi. Hey, Krim, 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 Krimmy, Krim, Krim. Krimmy, Krim, Krim. Why? Everybody's crimming. Just Ron. Ron's crimming. There's a, there's a lot of crim in chat right now. <laughs> uh, hi, friends. Hi, hi. Go green. Yeah, you know, I've been... Uh, <laughs> Uh, hi, Eileen. Hello, Eileen. Uh, I'm doing my best to be perky and happy, and I'm a mess. Hi, Mr. Meeseeks. It's so good to see you. I'm glad you're okay. Yay! People are starting to jump in. Yeah, let me get the Discord stuff going. Um, hang on here. Let's jump over. Let's see what's happening. Do, 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 do. I'm uh, I'm just checking it out. I'm just jumping in. Oh yeah, we see some of you. I see Minopoly has uh, has hung around from earlier, so that's cool. I think it's gonna be a chill night tonight, right? Maybe I've been hiding from us. Yeah, it's been a rough week. Hi, Lax. Hi. Um, there, I'm green. But you know what? No, I'm not gonna be green. I'm gonna be red because I'm always red, crimson clad. Hey, Mr. D. So, hi, Patient Zero. Hi, Mr. Six. Like, listen, hi to everybody. <laughs> Romina. Romina Ayala. Am I saying that right? I don't know if I am, but I like your name, so I'm going to say it anyways. Romina. <laughs> Hello, wherever you're watching. Uh, Ron wants to know if he should come on air and sing again. Yeah, I mean, he sang to Eileen last week, so let me just get sorted. I'm kind of trying to organize my mat there. Um hi to all of you i'm back thank you so much for putting up with me having a little bit of a hiatus last week and for many of you you had a, a wee bit of a hiatus as well i mean mr meeseeks just had you know that whole fucking gigantic hurricane tornado death trap going on so i'm so glad to see he's safe if you're new and you romina since we've never said hi before um tell me about yourself i want to know i love to i love to get to know my listeners um so this is full force radio my name is crimson clad every thursday night friday morning whatever time it is for you right now i play metal and we talk a lot of shit that's the reality we talk dumb stuff we hang out i play some loud ass music um and that's it i've missed you guys matt yay hive trending yay people are coming thank you for not uh leaving me hanging and feeling like a nerd doing this all alone so i'm back after uh, a week's break um things have been rough in my life but also compared to everybody else it's been good so you know uh we're not here to compare i'm just glad to know that all of you are uh still hanging in there loud ass music that's right now tonight I've been trimming my plants and it's all over my desk. Uh, tonight, I have got, uh, I've got quite an assortment. I was thinking about doing a theme show. I was thinking about doing a Six Degrees of Mutilation. Those are some of my favorite playlists. Uh, and they are essentially where I go out of my way to highlight the full career of an artist. Oh, Matt, thank you. Um, yeah, so for, for those of you who don't know, we won't go down the like super sad path, but I, I lost a member of my family um, week before last. And last week was honestly, I just needed some time to cope and be really, um, first, really sad. And second, really angry, really, really angry at the world and my ability to interact with, um, what is essentially like death rituals. Now we don't want to talk about that on air. Nobody wants to hear that. Nobody wants a show out of that, but certainly in our world as it stands right now with COVID, with rules around gathering, with everything that's happening, um, the idea of how we, <laughs> I'm done with this camping trip. Um, yeah, the idea that we, how we cope with death and uh, the rituals around death, that goes out the window. You can't gather, you can't, you know, have food, you can't share spaces public spaces have rules everybody's got to wear a mask anyways it doesn't matter so long story short uh i have been every single one of you are dying oh yeah and i've got some macabre tracks tonight so please don't judge me if i play some stuff tonight that like you'd be like holy shit this broad's grandma just died and this is what she's doing that is how it is so i'm in a way better headspace this week and i just want to play some music with you guys um but <laughs> 
The long and the short of it is, is that I'm angry at COVID this week more so than normal. Uh, obviously I'm angry at COVID all the time, but you guys are here with me. This is my catharsis and thank you. Honestly, oh, Lacey, are you actually here? <gasps> mm. Cathartic, not cathartic. <laughs> unless, unless you're Cly and you put the dick in everything. Um, but yeah, th thank you for the, um, sympathies. Uh, it's just, it's just a tough time to lose someone, right? Um, it's a very tough time. <gasps> oh, starting next week. I got very excited thinking Lacey could show up. Great. We'll have a big celebration. You tell her that we're going to do a special Lacey's off work, uh, show. So in any case, uh, let's start tonight because I got stuff all over the place. Whatever you guys are doing, whatever you guys want to talk about, that's what we're going to do tonight. This will be the last sort of super loosey goosey evening uh, before we move before we move back into some more structured shows, which I'm excited for. And I'm also you're on YouTube from the recommended feed. Romina, that's so cool. So I'm curious because it recommended to you. There's two things that I do. Uh, and I do both of them poorly, but it's so cool when we find people like you. I do, <laughs> hi Clay, is this where the orgy is? Maybe, you never know what's gonna, uh, <laughs> what's gonna happen. Road to Nowhere is here. There's two things that I do. One, synthwave, disruptive tech, and like crazy retro future cyberpunk aesthetic. That's not today. Tonight is heavy metal. I've got a great spread of stuff for you guys tonight. Everything from Clutch through the Scorpions through some crazy Finnish dance metal. Everybody's welcoming Romina, which is super cool. We're a little family here. So we play music together. We hang out and we talk shit. And in the last couple of weeks, what have we been talking about? Plants, our goth garden, metal jewelry, missing live shows. You know, it, it's way more fun when you join in the conversation. So, Romina, you're already one of the fam, for sure. Uh, I, hope you like, I hope you like metal or else you're going to bounce pretty quick. Um, so, here's the deal. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that has been coming out recently, and a lot of it is really heavy black metal. Hey, Marco, good to see you. And so, I'm going to include some of that tonight. Yes, jewelry, yes. Uh, and I'll show you because actually one of my little pieces arrived and I'm super happy with it. Road to Nowhere is saying we all start out as Nickelback energy and then return to be, return to the Chad only to be reborn into Nickelback energy. Yeah, Nickelback and heavy metal, not, not so congruent so much. Um, but yeah, some of the stuff that I wanted to include tonight is, um, some weird, some weird stuff that I've been discovering. Now, you guys know of my mad love for Finnish music. I love Finnish metal. Death metal in general, some of the best melodeath, some of the best death metal comes out of uh, Finland. Great, awesome. But one of the things that I've definitely found, <laughs> and the Tata -ta talk has already started in chat, so titties are already all over the place in chat. Um, one of the things that I have found, interestingly enough, is that we are experiencing a bit of a renaissance for metal, which is delightful. We're starting to see lots of bands, like a great example being Ulver, um, is starting to head in the post-metal direction, post-black direction, and a lot of metal is starting to fuse with other genres, which is really cool. And one of the things that I've got kind of in my pocket for the coming weeks is I'm going to do a black jazz show. Now, black jazz is exactly what it sounds like. And it's something that Izan made really famous and some other bands. And I'm really looking forward to getting into that with you guys. But it's essentially jazz music, like, you know, interpretive trumpet and saxophones mixed in with black metal. And it's a crazy, weird, fun genre. But thinking of some of the songs that I've played you over the time that we've been doing this show, some of them have been metal fused with dance music. And either you think it's the best thing ever or you fucking hate it. And I'm not sure what it's going to be, but I found another band with a new release with some of basically what I'm going to be start. I'm going to be calling Finnish black dance metal because I don't know that it has a name yet. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to play some of that for you guys. And then, of course, we'll go to some classics. There will always be Iron Maiden and uh, and just a little bit of everything tonight. So we're going to chat. We're going to hang out. We're going to have fun. We're going to play a lot of loud music. Now, one of the other things that is going to happen tonight is you here. <laughs> Yay. Hi. 
FDM, that's right, Finnish dance metal. It's like EDM, but much, much darker and blacker and colder. <laughs> One of the things I'm gonna do tonight is the very first edition of the titties black metal shirt is almost done. I've been working on it all this week uh, and I have been really tightening up this crazy black death metal logo. Now, if you weren't here in the previous weeks, we had this great idea, Patient Zero brought it up. <laughs> Ron, Ron leveled up already. And uh, one of the things we do on this show is when somebody levels up, uh, we, <laughs> we drink and I'm a drink right now. So drinking on nice for titties, because of course we do. Mm -hmm. One of the things I've been working on all week is hand drawing, excuse me, hand drawing a black metal logo. And if you guys were here a couple weeks ago, we decided we wanted to have a black metal shirt that said titties across it, but we wanted it to be written in a death font, you know, black metal, like twisted, gnarled death, like black metal logo, so that nobody would actually know what it said until they really got in and looked or asked. So that was the goal. I've been working on that all week. I've almost completely tightened it up. I'm really proud of it. Uh, so somebody tonight for coming to hang out uh, here with me, uh, we're, is gonna win the first edition of this shirt. Uh, so essentially what that means is I'm gonna creepily stalk you and send you things in the mail. But hey, it's free and it'll say titties. Maybe you'll wear it, maybe you won't. Who knows, it's a delight. So that's basically what's on the docket for tonight. We could continue. <laughs> we could continue as it goes. You'll notice I'm rocking my little headband here tonight because I was so hot. I didn't put on a metal shirt. I think that's anathema. I think I'm going to get canceled. So let's take a look at what we can start with tonight. I've got a whole bunch of fun stuff on the playlist. And I thought I would start with something not very metal at all. Now, I mentioned to you guys that I'm planning to do a black jazz show. And part of doing this black jazz show is going to be recognizing uh, the work of Aizan. Now, on this show, we've talked about him before. He's basically uh, everybody's favorite friendly neighborhood Satanist. He has been prolific in the evolution of metal over... Did you run out of metal shirts? No, <laughs> I definitely did not. <laughs> but he's been very prolific in... Uh... <laughs> Maybe I should. Maybe I should, Marco. Uh, he's been very prolific in his career as a metal musician. And I've played many of his tracks for you. We've played some Emperor tracks before. Um, he's basically God tier in the metal sort of world. And one of the things that he's been working on is a new album. Now, Aizan by himself has really explored a lot of, like I say, the jazz, the almost sort of pop pairings, really beautiful music, like musical songs paired with black metal elements. And he just, just, just released the first lead single from a new album coming out. And I'm really excited to play it for you guys. And it's not what you would expect. He's got someone singing with him on this track as he usually does. And it's the lead singer of a band called Leprous, who I've also played for you before. Now, the reason I bring this up is if you've been with me for many years, you know I love a good metal cover. I love them. I especially like metal covers that are weird and confusing and songs that you don't 100% expect to have a metal cover. And this one fits the bill. Aizan has covered a track called Manhattan Skyline. Now, maybe you've heard it before, maybe you haven't. Maybe it'll sound very 80s to you and there's a good reason for that. It is a cover of a track by AHA. Now, mm, I'm sure that band sounds familiar to you. Uh, you probably remember them from Take On Me. You know that cartoon video with the, the guy that comes to life out of the girl's sketch and then, you know, they fall in love and they're jumping in and out. Yes, exactly, Patient Zero. Take On Me. And so, <laughs> they actually wrote a bunch of great music, believe it or not. Aha, uh -huh. had some amazing tracks, but they never got out from the shadow of Take On Me. That's all anybody can think of when you think Aha, uh -huh. you think of Take On Me. But they did a really insanely beautiful track called Manhattan Skyline. And I have found it really cathartic. Over the last week, it came out at a time when I needed it. 
I already love the track by AHA, but it came out at a time where I have obviously been struggling with loss, with leaving love behind, with, hey, Normok, um, with a bunch of things that happen around, obviously, uh, losing a loved one, whether you're leaving or whether they're leaving, whether it's a death or when it, whether it's something, you know, slightly less uh, permanent. And this track has just... I'm here for it. So I want to play you this cover. It's Aizan covering an AHA track. It's not truly, truly insane, like black metal, but it's a beautiful take on an awesome track. And the guitars in it are like fucking perfection. And it's two behemoths in the metal scene. So I'm going to play you guys this track. I'm going to see what you think. And then we will venture into some more intensely metal things as the night goes on. Lots of fun. Some stuff accessible. Some stuff scary. All things full force. My name is Crimson Clan. You hang out with me. We'll chat a little bit more. I thought maybe we would talk a little bit about RoboCop because I can't get enough RoboCop. And uh, I'm going to play you some loud music. But this is Manhattan Skyline on Full Force Radio here on MSP Waves. I sit and watch umbrellas fly I'm trying to keep my newspaper dry I hear myself say My boat's leaving now So we shake hands and cry Now
of Manhattan skyline. There you go. Fabulous, fabulous cover of an aha track of all fucking things by Zahn. And uh, the singer's name is Einar Solberg. He's the lead singer from a band called Leprous. Um, both of them, honestly, metal royalty. Hi, welcome to everybody joining us. So fun, fun uh, stuff brought up in chat. I was mentioning that I kind of wanted to talk about Robocop because if you were here, hey, McG. He's making the rounds. Never feel obligated, but I'm always glad when you're here because blessed is our lettuce. Um, and hi to everybody else who's just joining us. If I haven't said hi to you, it's because I'm a douchebag. Just, you know, accept it. Mariano, hi. Gabriel, hi. Hello. Hello. Uh, welcome to Full Force Radio. So here's the deal. Uh, I actually was talking about Robocop on my other show, and I was saying, hey, man, it's one of my favorite black dramedy romance, you know, uh, dystopian future movies ever robocop one and to some degree robocop two um they're fabulous the storyline's amazing they're so great they have this streak of black humor they are um they're this horrible cautionary tale about technology and corporations and privatization and you know so many of the things that we're actually seeing happening in america right now and that got us on the topic on saturday and so I tweeted about it and people were talking about it and we had a great show and blah, 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 blah. And then today, trending, I'd buy that for a dollar. I love that guy. Oh my God, the original is fabulous. I watched the remake. It was okay. It was fun. It didn't have the same music. Cool visuals, like when he's just body parts on the table and they're putting them together. Yeah, that's fucking gross. Like, well done. But doesn't have the same magic. The original is just fucking perfect and actually many of you guys know I'm a firearms enthusiast and I remember growing up and just always watching that and being like I want a gun like Robocop I want to be cool like Ro I want to go to the firing range and I want to get really good and just everything about that movie informed my aesthetic and we talk about this a lot like between metal and synthwave my whole aesthetic was shaped around like Robocop Blade Runner uh demolition man running man like that was my jam that's where my head was staunchly and firmly at and so uh you know here it's trending today that they want to make a robocop from before robocop with no actual robocop yeah robo crim that's right exactly i fucking love it um they want to make a robocop with no robocop and I don't know how I feel about it. Now, have you guys read the article? What is the plan? They say, okay, it's going to be a prequel. And uh, I just realized I didn't plug in my camera one sec. It's going to be a prequel. And, you know, and I'm going, okay, well, that makes sense. Because obviously at the beginning of Robocop, he's created. He's birthed. He's born. You see what happens to him. You see how he gets all fucked up by Clarence Bodiger and his gang. Um, so I never actually clicked through the clickbait. Did any of you guys read what that's all about? How can you have a Robocop with no Robocop? Please tell me if you read the article. Now, if you didn't, what I would love to see is a movie centered around essentially Clarence Bodiger. I want to see a gangland movie about his rise to like co cocaine supremacy. Uh, Mackenzie Gary said, I recently watched Blade Runner 2049. Oh... That is, I loved it. And you know what? We're going to talk about that too because we're going to talk about Dune. And, oh, hey, done. Hey, done. I'm clickbait. It's possible. <laughs> and Clay apparently brought a, bought a picture of me. Oh, fun. Fun. I'm going to look at it. <gasps> it's beautiful. Oh, I'm in love with it. She's much prettier than I am. But, uh, yeah, I love it. Your art is fabulous. I'm going to tip that in a bit. Your collection is fabulous, Clay. So here's the deal. Blade Runner 2049 is the same director as the guy who is doing the new Dune. Now, many of you guys have seen the Dune trailer. That's come up in chat. Dune is another movie that I loved. I loved Dune. Um, and so here's the thing. The original Dune, well, nostalgic and fabulous for what it is, is not actually a good movie now don't at me 
and everyone is going to flip their shit. But this is my opinion. I love it because of the nostalgia. I love it because of the actors in it. Um, I love Kyle MacLachlan. I love Patrick Stewart. I love, I mean, even fucking Sting. Sting running around in his little, like, golden wing cod piece. And just everything. <laughs> everything about that Dune, that original movie, is so, so nostalgic and so iconic. But <laughs> if you break it down... It's not actually a great movie. It's an okay movie that we love. And so I'm kind of looking at this as, okay, what are some movies that this Denis Villeneuve, Villeneuve, <laughs> what has he done? I'm I'm definitely the derpiest. Oh, D-Rep, I thought you said I was being a derp, which is also true. So, I mean, I'm actually here for this specifically because I love the original, but I recognize that it could be done better. Imagine if they could pair some practical special effects with like today's capabilities with some of the costumes and admittedly Villeneuve has a great eye think of Blade Runner 2049 you guys are talking about Arrival how beautiful it was all of these movies that he's done recently he has that dark and foreboding yes the golden cod piece exactly <laughs> people are joining hearing cod piece and leaving again which is fair but he has that aesthetic he's got it he knows it he feels it and he expresses it beautifully and you know i don't know if you guys have been seeing recently uh just because obviously there's a lot of wildfires that are happening right now right tons of wildfires and the sky along the west coast is orange and terrifying because of the smoke and everything that's happening with the fires and then People are looking at images from Blade Runner 2049 and they're comparing this orange dystopian dusty hellscape and the ravaged sort of images of, you know, a Vegas type human settlement gone to naught. And I'm kind of like, oh, <laughs> he nailed it. He nailed it, right? You're looking at pictures of like San Francisco and they look like Blade Runner 2049. So I'm kind of, I'm kind of here for it. I don't know. A small part of me is like, okay, I love the original movie, but I love it because it's iconic. I think it could be done better. I've seen some stuff that he's done and I kind of feel like his vision will be a good fit. What do you guys think? I mean, we're all just praying that the story gets done well. And I think we can all agree. Yeah, we want to see that. Now, I'm not going to lie. I'm I'm partial to uh <laughs> to Kyle Drogo being in it. What's his name? God. Um I've lost his name. Aquaman, Kyle Drogo. What else has he done? Doesn't matter. He's in it. Uh and he's going to be Duncan. And I'm excited because I think they're going to touch on some aspects of the story that were left out in the original sort of uh that that really didn't get touched on in that original Thing of dune but everybody's hashtag praying in the chat everybody's praying right want to see it done right chad kroger no no that's not who i'm talking about <laughs> yeah and dunn's actually talking about if they were remaking other stephen king movies now i'm not a big horror fan i'm, I'm definitely solidly riding the line of dystopian fiction um momo Ugh. <laughs> Jason. Oh, Jason Momoa. I thought you were talking about that creepy Momo doll, Normok. Yeah, Jason Momoa. He's... Hey, tripod! Tripod? Tripody. Tripod. <laughs> it's my job to wreck your, your name. That's what I do on air. <gasps> and I actually owe somebody a drink. Who did I not drink for? Like an asshole. Somebody leveled up during that track. And I didn't drink. I'm sorry. Let me do that first. It is Jason Momoa. And he is a tall drink of water, that one. But only when he's scruffy and beat up and shit. If he's too pretty, I don't want it. So I'm hoping Jason Momoa in a desert. It's going to work for me. No, there was a level done. I'm not just, I don't need a, I don't need a reason to drink. <laughs> so anyways, I was just curious to see what you guys thought. Because these are the movies that like, honest to God, led me to the aesthetic that probably has had the most impact on synthwave and metal in general for me. Like, 
you know, these are these are classic, classic gateway drugs. Normok makes sure to chat a lot, so she has to drink. Yeah, I get I get the feeling tonight's gonna be a disaster. Uh, Road to Nowhere is saying that cod pieces go for big money on eBay. It's a good niche. Okay, question. Here's the thing. Halloween is coming up. And you guys know Halloween is also, because I'm a spooky bitch, Halloween is my jam. We all know this. Halloween is one of my jams. And so Halloween's going to look different this year, part one. But part two is, is there anybody here who would ever be brave enough to go as Sting in his magical flying gold cod piece? Dune, Sting, cod piece, Halloween costume. I feel like that's, that's like right up there with sexy blank for for women and last year we we spent an entire episode uh (laughs) we spent an entire episode um talking about like slutty nouns as women's halloween costumes but i'm like you could be slutty sting from dune (laughs) how come we don't have more slutty male costumes uh yeah gabriel's on this train i can see mariano's uh talking about cyberpunk there it is patient zero's got it the winged cod piece in chat. You see? Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Zardoz. Yeah. Barbarella even is kind of like a cyberspace sex adventure. Um, but yeah, Johnny Mnemonic, great example. Universal Soldier, Gattaca, Dark City. Yes. Yes. So many kind of uh, retro, future noir, cyberpunk, cyberfunk, uh, Neo Tokyo kind of aesthetics. I mean, arguably. Even things like uh, Akira <laughs> would fit in that. Um, yes, exactly. There you go. Gabriel's right on my, he's right on my level. So anyways, we're, we're just chatting about movies. We're playing loud music and, and chatting about movies. But I'm not going to lie. I challenge any of you to either wear the, uh, z- oh, Mariano's going to do a marathon. Very cool. And, you know, I actually thought about this because of the Dune trailer coming out. I thought I was going to sit on this and I was going to put together um, a movie-inspired show. Because you guys remember we did the Tolkien. We did the Dark Realms of Tolkien episode, which was so fucking cool. We did a video game-inspired one. Um, What else did we do? We did a Lord... Yeah, we did the Lord of the Rings one, which was Tolkien. I'm trying to remember. We've done quite a few. And I could see this being a really cool crossover... um, a really cool crossover. Eon Flux, another great one. Yeah, Ghost in the Shell, another one. There's a lot of um, sort of cyberpunkish, ish cypherpunk kind of movies that actually are very like Japan, Asian centric that are very Neo-Tokyo. That's almost like uh, a subgenre of the genre. Um, so we got lots of stuff to talk about tonight and I probably will actually put a show together for this. But tonight I'm going to, uh, I- I'm just going to play whatever I'm going to play and we're going to have some real fun with this. And, uh, and we'll play some loud music. I swear, we won't just talk the whole time. But I'm laughing because I'm now picturing each and every one of you as Slutty Sting or Slutty Zardoz. Um, and I'm here for it. <laughs> I'm so here for it. So we can talk a little bit more about movies. We can talk about whatever you guys want to talk about. I want to play some more music for you. So I know some of you guys only stick around if the music is approachable and, you know, not too loud, not too angry. Got a little bit of everything tonight. So if you're cool with that, I'm cool with that. Um, everybody's having fun in the Discord chat. If you're watching on YouTube, on Twitch, if you're watching, um, where the fuck else might you be watching? All sorts of places. Theta, Vim TV, the MSPWaves.com website. So many things. We're gonna have uh, we're gonna have some music, and then we'll probably continue about upcoming movies because we're terrified that they're going to ruin our childhood. But we also can't look away because what if it's good? What if it's good? All right. So I did just play you guys uh, that Eyes On track, and I thought let's um, let's start with something that's actually a little bit newer. I want to play you one of the newest tracks released by Gojira, and it's called Another World, and I'm really really here for it now. Gojira is, uh, how do I put this? I don't want to say they're overrated. That's not fair. But if you guys remember this band, I've played it a number of, I've been playing them a number of times and they kind of fit the Japanese anime future Tokyo vibe because Gojira specifically is like a uh, bastardization of the way that in foreign movies, the way they say Godzilla, go Gojira, you know, don't cancel me. That's, that's just what it is. (laughs) It's what it is. And so, I want to play this Gojira track because the most recent albums from them, they're okay. They're, they're, they're okay. Um, 
But the last one that came out was Magma. Magma had a couple of tracks that I really like. L'Enfant Sauvage is the album before that. And, you know, they've been around since, what, early, early 2000s at least? Early 2000s. And they're hit or miss. Some of their tracks are really, really, really overblown. People get really, uh oh, so pro. Hey, Viking, good to see you, Dynamic Crane. Thanks for joining us. Hi to everybody who's hopping in. If I didn't say hi to you, it's because I'm an asshole. Um, and so I love a lot of their music, but they're one of the, like, overhyped bands that's out there. Um, and I was kind of like, mm, all right, let's see. <laughs> yeah, the YouTube algorithm knows. It knows. Uh, so let me play this track for you because it's actually got some sick, sick guitar work in it. And I'm really impressed. And I think if the album is, the new album that's upcoming is going to sound like this track, that we're in for a gooder. It's going to be a triumphant return of Gojira. <laughs> I'm going to get canceled. My name is Crimson Cloud. It's Full Force Radio. We're basically going to talk about movies now tonight. Wasn't planned, but that's what we're doing. We're talking about the cyberpunk aesthetic. It's a clash of worlds. And Mariano is compiling an ultimate list of retro future, Neo Tokyo, cyberpunk, cyberfunk, neuromancer style, um, dystopian future horror cautionary tales. Uh, another one that is really old that fits on that list would definitely be Logan's Run. My name is Crimson Clad. If you've got a great movie, if you've got a good track, if you just want to come and hang out, bang your head, chat with some people who are pretty fucking cool, this is the place to be. It is Full Force Radio here on MSP Waves. Ah!
All right, fabulous new Gojira. Hey, welcome to Full Force Radio. My name is Crimson Clad, and on Thursday nights, Friday mornings, some of you are upside down, some of you are weird, random, sort of half materialized places in the uh, space time continuum. I play metal and we talk shit. Now, tonight, we've already kind of just settled into talking about. Uh, <laughs> Talking about movies and talking about some of the upcoming uh, offerings on the table. There was some chatter, a little bit of a leaked idea that there's going to be a RoboCop without a RoboCop. And uh, talking a little bit about the upcoming Dune and uh, whether or not that's going to be good and prayers that it will be. Now, we talked about this one time on this show. I can very specifically remember that we talked about not just Dune, but we talked, yeah, and Bill and Ted face the music. I haven't seen it, but people are actually saying that it's good. People are saying, hey, this movie didn't try to, uh, didn't try to teach us any lessons or anything. They just kept it about being good friends and being excellent to each other. And they just didn't try too hard. And because of that, it's an okay movie to watch. And I'm like, okay, okay, that makes me happy. We might... We might need that. We might need that. So, hey, Jason, good to see you, my man. I got some music on the playlist for you tonight. Um, so, you know, <laughs> I I have to say, we talked about Dune on this show before. We've definitely, definitely done that. But one of the Dunes that I think we didn't get too deep into was Jodorowsky's Dune. Now, if you want to kind of learn a little bit more about something absolutely bizarre and psychedelic and a, and a different take on what Dune could be, there's a great documentary on this. But even just researching it, it's a can of worms. You're going to get yourself into a fucking can of worms. And so Jodorowsky's Dune is this dream, this, I don't know, this insane dream of a fully psychedelic Dune. So if you imagine what spice does to the mind, if you, you know, if you remember the Dune story and the expansion of consciousness and the connection to the universe and the fucking get just blue eyed motherfucking wacky. You've only seen the Dune with the guy from Twin Peaks. Yes, that's the um, that's the sort of like Dune movie that everybody knows. That's Kyle MacLachlan. But Jodorowsky wanted to create an insane version of Dune, the true Dune, his mind altering, expanded consciousness, uh, the understanding of the story on a bigger level beyond sort of like the aesthetics of it all. Now, Normok's saying it's got to be tough to beat Lynch on the weirdness scale. I would normally agree. And we actually did a whole episode here on this show, we had an episode called Lynch Binge, and we actually played nothing but music inspired by David Lynch, and a lot of it was Twin Peaks inspired. And I'll actually, I'll go find the link to that show and drop it in chat, because it was so good. There's some great music on that. Um, but I'm going to argue that this would have 100% beaten Lynch on the weirdness scale. Jodorowsky wanted to create a Dune that fixated solely on the sort of mind-altering expansion of consciousness aspect of Dune. And so where you have the story is very much a political and economic study, which, you know, when you read the books, if you're not ready for it, there's parts that are, they're pretty, they're pretty dull. They're pretty dull. Um, and it's partially because they are so accurate to human nature. They're so accurate to, you know, we want to expand our consumerist empires. We want to control resources because if you control resources, you control people. And and there's a very important story in that. But Jodorowsky was like, yeah, 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 that's cool. But also, and if you see the sketches, the soundtrack, the planning, the artboards, the dream that went into the idea behind Jodorowsky's Dune. It is the most fabulous, insane, completely fucking bizarre vision of Dune you'll ever see. And you've 
got to check it out. Uh, I highly recommend it. I'm going to look up in the break. In fact, somebody can look up now because there's lots of you guys listening. Look it up. Somebody see. I don't know if it's actually called Jodorowsky's Dune um, or not. Check it out. Tell me what is the um, what is the actual name of the documentary about it. I am selling it good. That's right. But you know, the reality, Dynamic Green, is it's something completely different. It doesn't matter that it skipped half the book. It's a totally different take than what we know. You missed the start of this conversation, which was a new version of Dune is going to be coming out. It looks great. And part of it is the original Dune is beloved just because we've had it for so long. It is the definitive Dune in our minds. But I mean, as far as it being a movie goes... There were some things that could be better. It's a great vision and it's everything in our mind and it's beloved because the people in it are fabulous and it's beloved because it's tied into our nostalgia, but some parts of it could have been done better. And so you had Dune and then you had Jodorowsky's idea of Dune and both of them were so different and so interesting. And neither of them at the end of the day were really truly necessarily what Herbert wrote, right? There's all sorts of interpretations. So I'm pretty excited to see another take on it yet. <laughs> uh, it's a new version. I thought they were trying to stay true to the book. Maybe I misunderstood the new concept. It, it's all the same book, though. It's all the original sort of a Dune encapsulated storyline. Now, with that being said, there are a ton of books that were cherry picked and chosen. Lots of stuff was skipped in this sort of original. Jodorowsky's version was like, he, yeah, he was going to go in forever and ever. But I don't know if you guys have ever actually read beyond the original, like, Dune novel and read through the rest of the Houses of Harkonnen and through the rest of, like, Children of Dune and all the rest. Oh, it's, there's a lot. There's a lot. And you would definitely want to be a little judicious in choosing which stories you made into a movie, I would say. There's... There's a whole lot of Dune. Uh, and, and certainly it would take someone better than me to try and and coalesce that into a story that would make for good movies. So I'm excited anyways. I think that, um, I think truly <laughs> that Villeneuve has the aesthetic down and that excites me for sure. Um, now you guys are talking about Stalker. Yes. Have you guys seen Stalker? Have you seen that movie? Um, there are some great ones. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Meeseeks. We'll see you later. I hope your internet gets better. Stay tough. Uh, I'm hoping for power for you too soon as well. You only read Dune. The first half of the book discouraged me from reading and more books. Yeah, it's true. Dynamic Green. Dune, it's, it's, it's hefty. It is at its heart a political economic story. It's paired with, you know, one man saves the world. One man in an environmental battle. You know, the oppressed people rise up. But... At its heart, it is a political and economic story, which is, <laughs> it's not for everyone. So any new take on it is going to be fun and exciting. I hope, I hope, I hope. Um, so yeah, the, um, you know, the book by Stanislav Lem, yeah, I definitely recommend Stalker. Um, and, and if you've never seen it, it's a pretty fucking bizarre one too. So we're on we're on just quite the spiral tonight of like bizarre, dystopian, terrifying, like retro visions of the future. But I'm here for it. I love all of these. Is it is it strange that the media that was so formative to us and these stories that made that made us kind of shiver in the night when we were younger. Furious! I'm so happy to see you. Furious, your birthday is coming up. That's so exciting. I'm glad to see you. I'm glad you're hanging out. Um, Tarkovsky was a weird but interesting movie maker. Yes. Stalker, is that Prime or Netflix? Well, I'm talking about the original one, which is literally from way back when. Um, and it is actually something that a bunch of uh, video games were inspired by, a bunch of aesthetics were inspired by. But when it was originally created, it was this sort of terrifying psychological thriller about the unknown. And at the time, the way that it was shot, it's literally three men just walking around. And it is 
it's wild. We'll talk about it. Let's, um, <laughs> I do remember. I do remember. Uh, you missed my birthday, Furious, but you're here. That's a gift. So let's continue. Before we get too deep into the stalker talk, we're, let's talk about this. Because if you haven't seen it, I, I, you've got to, got to, got to put this on your list. Let's play some more music because that's what I'm supposed to do on this show. We're an hour in and we played two tracks. I am such a fucking failure. Um, I want to play something to kind of get us in the mood for stalker. How heavy can I go right now? How heavy are you guys willing to descend into madness with me? I've got two bands that, um, Ender's Game, another great book. I got two bands on the docket to come up next. One is Obsequie and they are truly, uh, sort of folk, uh, tinged with black death. And then I also have, um, <laughs> I have something by Aether Realm, who are a band that have kind of also folk, uh, a folk aspect, but they take it in a, in a slightly more upbeat direction. It's still dark, still got growling vocals, both have it. So let's play something by Obsequie. Oh, two months ago. Yeah, let's just forget that nonsense. <laughs> I'll post, I'll post when I'm dead. Listen, I'm going to play the Obsequio track. We'll see what you guys think. If this is too heavy for you, don't worry. We've got all sorts of things from all over the metal spectrum. But this, I do want to play. Now, Obsequio, they are from Minnesota. Like, not what you would expect. The sound that comes out of these guys is something that would be really um, at home in either Finland or out of Gothenburg. This is some really intense sort of icy black death metal, but with a very decidedly folkloric tinge. And it's really interesting that this is quite new. They were founded in the mid-2000s. I, I don't quote me on that. But after 2005... So they were thoroughly out of the new metal craze. It's very interesting that a band coming out of Minnesota cultivated a sound like this, but it's awesome. It's like Hellenic black metal. It's fucking great shit. I'm going to play you a track that I love off of um, the most recent album called Series in Emerald Streams. And we'll see what you guys think. This has got uh, a much heavier line through it. Now, Gabriel and some of you here, I know for a fact that you are totally into the idea of, um, yes, that's exactly the movie, Marco, perfect. Uh, I know many of you guys are into the idea of some of the bands that I've kind of floated by you. And for Gabriel, um, Windier is a band that I played recently that has a very similar aesthetic, a slight tinge of psychedelic, but dark black, icy death metal paired with cool folklore and interesting kind of, um, traditional melodies. It's good stuff. It's obsequie. It's from Minnesota. <laughs> I'm Crimson Glad. This is Full Force Radio.
All right, there you go with that beautiful sort of pastoral medieval birds chirping in the background. Ah, obsequie, please give me your finest medieval sonnet, sir, and uh, don't skimp on the blast beats. Hey, I'm Crimson Glad. This is Full Force Radio. You know, it's always tough. It's always tough because um, what I generally listen to is not the greatest for radio. And so I'm always, uh, hey, Julia, I'm always, I- I'm always torn in what I'm going to play and what order I'm going to play it in. Because for those of you who are here and you're craving the hardest and the blackest and the heaviest and the meanest, uh, there's some of you who are like, oh, no, thank you. No, no, absolutely not. And so trying to find a nice balance to make for the best version of this live stream is always fun. So, you know, if you're willing to hang on through something you don't like, I will do my best to find something you do like. But I fucking love that. The band is called Obsequie. If you are craving some like harshly medieval black metal, I highly recommend checking out um that album there. It's absolutely beautiful and also hits all of the check boxes for when you need some uh, sick blast beats and black uh, growling in your life. So the guys we were talking about Stalker while that track was playing. Now Stalker, there is the book, yes. And um, one of the, yeah, exactly. This is very cool. So Gabriel's talking about um, both the book and the movie. Now the movie, I love I love the movie but partially because it's weird and a lot about the movie um really kind of combines down what you hear in the synopsis of the book into a single day and the movie is very very famous it's studied by um anybody who's oh excuse me that uh, whiskey is coming back for a visit um Anybody who essentially goes into filmmaking at some point will study Stalker. Um, And it's this really fascinating sort of black and white, partially, it's, it's monochrome. There are some very gentle flashes of color when you're outside of the zone. It's this really interesting, gray, terrifying world. Now the book, if you've read the book, the book is about um, these zones and they pop up around the world and weird shit happens in the zones. Strange, paranormal styled shit. And the theory is, is that aliens have visited and where the aliens have visited, there are these pockets of disturbed time and space. And if you enter them, You don't know what's going to happen to you, except you're probably going to die. And if you go into a zone, you're probably not going to come back out. And so the idea behind Stalker is that these zones are not understood and they're dangerous. And so, of course, government tries to control it and they try to control access into these zones, knowing that not only are they dangerous, they could potentially contain information and technology that obviously the government should control. And so in the book, it's actually um, a long period of time that's covered and um, it's not quite as Russian, shall we say. But the idea is stalkers are people who go into the zones, who risk the government's wrath, who sneak in and look for things to bring back out or who guide people in and out. And so the movie version of this is spectacular and I highly recommend it. The movie version has a number of firsts that for if you are a cinema buff, if you're a spooky, interesting, you know, visual kind of person, person, I highly recommend you watch it. Um, (laughs) Julia is trying to probe people in the chat. Speaking of aliens, so the Stalker movie, I don't want to ruin it for you, but it's essentially the same premise. It is a piece of Russia that is blocked off by the government. The zone is there. And what this follows is supposedly the last trip of a Stalker. And so it starts out in his home and his wife begs him not to go. He meets up with two other people. So there's the Stalker and then there are two other men and they're never described by their names not even not even once they are solely solely referred to by their profession there is from the outset of the movie there's this weird 
dehumanization, but also this idea that it doesn't matter who they are because they could be, they could be anything. They could be anyone. They could be you. And the movie follows this stalker leading these two other men into the zone and leading them into the sort of end of the zone. And at the end, there is supposedly ultimate knowledge and potentially something that will change lives and could even have the potential to make, grant you a wish almost. Uh, and so the whole movie is these men sneak into the zone and it is one long extended shot of them moving through what is essentially an empty wasteland. It's wild. There is so little that happens on the screen. It is almost entirely the interaction of these three characters and watching them feel what's happening in the zone. You don't see aliens. There's no fucking wild, gory dismemberment scenes. It is terrifying solely in the fact that they are very aware that there is something eerie and abnormal and dangerous stalking them through the zone. A presence, a being, a ripple in time. They're not even sure. Is it technology? They just know that if they misstep, if they get lost, if they're not careful, they will not come back out. <laughs> yeah, like Steam nowadays. And so it is. It's terrifying. And it's all in your mind. It's beautifully shot. It's incredible sound design. The whole thing is bizarre. And to me, um, it certainly is sort of like this precursor to urbex. And I think that was even mentioned in um, the Wikipedia that Gabriel posted. When I first watched it, the first thing I wanted to do was sneak in. Yes, this scene is terrifying. This scene with the sand dunes, absolutely terrifying. Um, but yeah, if you haven't seen Stalker, I highly recommend it. Now, if you're the type of person who doesn't like long, slow buildups and movies that don't necessarily have like a trillion explosions and lots of action, Stalker is not going to be for you. But for most of you getting to know you, I think you're really going to, uh, enter it. Like you're really going to enjoy this movie. It's filled in 1979. It was groundbreaking at the time. And yes, it did actually end up killing the director because of all of the radiation in the area. They picked an area that was eerie, abandoned, falling apart, that really encapsulated the zone. Is it a psychological danger? Is it a paranormal danger? Is it a very real and present technology, human-based danger? Mm, no one's quite sure. And that is at the heart of this. These men don't know why they're going in. They don't know what they want to find. They're trying to discover that. And they're also trying not to die on the way in and the way out. And it is a uh, psychological drama at its best. And to this day, it's very effective because it didn't need crazy effects. It's all lighting, coloration, you know, um, the scenes, the shots, and the people. There's nothing that needs to be done to it. It still fucking holds up. So highly recommended. We've gone on a tangent. Now, this is not, um, this is absolutely a take on the retro future, 100%. Um, but it's not quite as technology driven as, say, a Demolition Man, a Running Man, a Robocop, a Nakira, um, a Blade Runner. It is absolutely an alternate dystopian future, but it's not quite so technology heavy as some of the other ones that we've been talking about tonight. So let's continue on with the music. I've got lots of stuff to play for you tonight. What are you guys feeling like? Because I did say that I was going to kind of have a little bit of fun with you and explore this dorky but interesting aspect of Finnish dance metal. Um, and not that long ago, I played you uh, a band actually out of the states and it was a track called hyper hyper and you guys liked it like totally weird but most of you liked it and it's a it's a very strange take especially coming out of what was essentially just some super medieval black metal moving into what is essentially 
Uh, yes, yes, Julia is here for it. I don't know if she's listening, but she's, uh, if you want spooky aesthetics and cool films and this kind of sort of, um, psychological aspect of things, Julia would definitely probably have some other great suggestions. Now, uh, so I'm going to do it. I'm going to kind of get us into, um, some of this weird dancey stuff and we'll come back out again. I do want to play some more classic rock and roll. I want to play some more classic bands. We'll always end with up the irons we'll, with Iron Maiden. Um, but I do want to kind of move into this weird space that I'm discovering. And a lot of it is, um, it very much is sort of like EDM beats paired with just thrashy, thrashy metal guitars. Um, and to kind of ease us into that, I'm going to play something by uh, an artist called Alex Yarmack. And he is just a dude who basically picks up Synthwave and covers it with metal guitars. And so all of his tracks are bouncy, they're dance tracks, the tracks that you've probably heard me play on Cyberbuzz on Saturdays, they're Synthwave tracks, but they are just straight up awesome heavy metal guitars and uh, I love his work so yeah Julia was just here to uh, say hi to Furious don't be a stranger Furious we've loved having you around I'm gonna play you guys something by Alex Yarmack it's a cover of Genesee Avenue which is a track originally by Ghost I've played him for you guys before too so lots of fun stuff on the docket tonight we're gonna dance a little bit right now we'll see everybody may throw up and run away it's very possible no matter what I play somebody's gonna be miserable that's the uh that's the full forest part of uh, full forest, right? Is I'm just gonna, I'm gonna run at something headlong and see how you react. My name is Crimson Glad, this is MSP Waves. We'll see, we'll see. Let's start with some Alex Yarmick and descend into Finnish dance metal. <laughs>
There you go. Fucking sick. I love Alex Yarmack. Hey, it's full force of radio. I'm Crimson Cloud. People are jumping in, jumping out. I'm scaring some people away. Some people are here for it. Some people are not here for it. I'm used to it. Don't even worry about it. But tonight, uh, we are doing a little bit of everything. We are welcoming me back after a day off, a week off, whatever you want to call it. And uh, we're playing a lot of uh, loud music. A lot of it is like that. I've got some finished dance metal is what we're calling it tonight. And then, of course, you know, the regular stuff across the spectrum. Uh, we've been talking about movies. Movies have basically taken over the entire stream tonight. We started off talking about RoboCop with no Robo, maybe not even a cop prequel to RoboCop and what that's going to look like. Then we moved into uh, Dune, the new take on Dune, which hopefully will be really good and talking about some of our uh, favorites around there and then building like a master list of dystopian retro future Neo Tokyo uh, retro. I don't know what just that jam of cyberpunk and what we sort of believed for a long time was going to be our future. Once we saw Blade Runner, there was this change. And we actually, we talked about this. Have you seen Equals? No, I haven't. Yeah, so just cop? <laughs> Basically. <laughs> now, so here's the deal. Um, you know, we talked about this on the other show, but there's always crossovers. I mean, my interests are my interests. So often I'll find ways to have topics that start out on CyberBuzz that make it here to full force. So we, you know, we talk about it all over the place. And one of the shows we talked about the design aesthetic that this idea of the future kind of put on us. And I've noticed it goes in cycles. So for a long time, Blade Runner was our design aesthetic. Blade Runner was the future was going to be uh, very Asian inspired, full of neon, dirty, uh, you know, sort of this scrabble to survive, um, almost like Dick Tracy 1920s detective novel meets iRobot. It was this fascinating idea that the future was always going to be just that gritty side of dystopian. And then something happened in the 2000s and Apple and the rise of like technologies that we really liked and branding that we really liked kind of took over. And all of a sudden, the new Star Trek was very white and shiny and everything was just gleaming white and very minimalist. And all of a sudden the future became, yeah, 2020 turned out more like Fifth Element. Surprise! I love Fifth Element. That's a, That movie is uh, one of my favorites. But you know what I mean? There was this period where everything in the future became like the Apple store. The future became white and featureless and gleaming and Spartan. And the idea of what futuristic meant was this sort of everybody wears the same white clothing everybody has the same you know what I mean it was very bright very sterile and the idea <laughs> the idea of like that future aesthetic shifted and we saw it then we started moving into films like Gattaca AI and yes the iRobot take uh you know I never watched it because I love the books I didn't want to watch Will Smith in it. Um, all of those, there was this sort of 2000s era where everything shifted to this new aesthetic. Even um, if you remember, yeah, you, Gabriel's going down the other, uh, the other route, which is Event Horizon, Aliens, Contact, Terminator. And yeah, I would agree, but those, those are not just future movies. Those are very specifically spacefaring movies. Um, but I'm with Mackenzie Gurry. Hey, hi, Qua. Hello. <laughs> I happen to love the gritty holographic future. I love the idea of dirty cement with puddles of you're not quite sure what, but probably acid rain reflecting flickering neon signs in a pigeon trade language of all of the races left on what passes for Earth. That to me, that aesthetic. Now, don't get me wrong. I fucking love it. I don't want to live it. And I kind of feel like it's coming. <laughs> you guys are weird. I like trees. Yeah, Gabriel, that's the point. I find it exceptionally aesthetic. I love concept art. I love movies. I love the lighting. I love, but at the end of the day, I want to live here now in a beautiful, um, 
green, healthy, thriving world with people who love and care for each other and are building, you know, a better humanity for everyone. But that doesn't mean I can't like the idea of, you know, uh, a Blade Runner-esque look to the future. Now, Eileen, you've got a great point. Have you guys seen Annihilation? Annihilation is an adaptation of a book that actually has a really fascinating take on this in that a lot of the sort of dystopian alien future that visits us um, specifically has a an ecological and a um, like a like a biological element to it. It is, oh, you haven't read the book. The books I actually think are better than the movie, um, but the movie did a pretty good job. And there are actually three of them. I think there are three books in the, tr I think it's a trilogy. Clay might know. Clay, if you've read them, let us know. But Annihilation, um, if you haven't seen the movie, handles this aesthetic very differently and it's fascinating. And the idea is, is essentially similar sort of thing. There's a zone. We don't know what's happening in it. We don't know what's inside it, but we do know that something is wrong with it. And we do know that if you go in there, you're probably going to die. And as they enter into this area, there is that paranormal. There is those ripples in time and space and energy. And there are strange occurrences. People disappear. People's whole biology and thought process changes. And as they move through this area, there is this incredible beauty of nature. Plants are growing like nobody's ever seen before. Animals are mutating and all sorts of, um, all sorts of intertwining of human and plant DNA, semblance of being. I can't quite explain it, but that's the aesthetic is that the future is a little bit dark and a little bit scary and there is hints of technology and energy but a lot of it is actually intertwined with the earth taking back over and and things that we think of as very harmless and nurturing like foliage and leaves and blue sky and flowers are actually terrifying and murderous which is a cool and different take on things road to nowhere yeah yeah that three-titted alien she's a fucking classic that's there you go so for slutty Halloween this year, in preparation for slutty Halloween, which we don't even know, what the hell? You know, we don't even know what's going to happen for Halloween this year. Do you guys know? Are we going to be allowed to go out and drink together, party? I mean, is this the end of the costume? Would you put a costume on and get into a Halloween Zoom conversation? I don't know. This is going to be a whole thing. We're going to have to discuss this. My god. <laughs> but that three-titted alien lady... That's what it is. For the men, you can be slutty Zardoz or slutty Dune Sting with your winged cod piece. If you're a woman, you can be slutty Lilu Dallas Multipass or slutty three titty. <laughs> Krim, are you giving us a three titty costume? I don't. How? What could I make a third tit out of? These are the questions that we ask on Full Force Radio. And I think we should crowdsource these. What would I make a third tit out of? I mean, nowadays, you can get silicone everything. Could I just order one silicone tit? Can I do that? Do you guys know? Maybe look it up, maybe don't. I mean, I don't know if anybody looks at your internet history. Take that into account when you, go <laughs> when you Google this. Just the one, just glue one silicone tit just to my chest. I mean, I don't know. Maybe, sure, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Clay and I apparently are going to be drag versions of each other's. Oh, you're all interested in the other two. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, yeah, or slutty Barbarella. Now, Gabriel, have you ever seen Barbarella? This is another one. Uh, <laughs> dynamic, <laughs> dynamic Green says I'm a hell of a salesperson. <laughs> you're over here thinking you're actually going to read these books and watch these movies. I love that. I love Dynamic Green. He's like, you, you almost made me read a book. <laughs> Oh, Krimi, you almost made me read a book. <laughs> Your roommate in college got a fake one from Johnson & Johnson for free. <laughs> what is happening in chat? What is going on? Oh, Lord. Um, you know what? Barbarella. <laughs> oh, and now we're on Amazon. We're finding fake boobs on Amazon. Welcome to Full Force Radio. If you're just joining us, uh, shit's getting a little bit... 
a little bit weird and it's the way we like it so listen we're talking about barbarella and i haven't played this track in a while i am gonna play you a track by clutch and i fucking love it but as soon as we brought up barbarella which is for me one of the very first sort of like sexploitation grindhouse esque kind of films where it was this fun awesome colorful crazy wild romp into the future but also barbarella solved everything by having multiple orgasms and being delightfully sexy and at the age that i watched this movie i didn't have a good handle on a lot of what was happening in this movie uh, and I just knew I wanted to be like her because she had great hair and all her outfits were fun and she had a gun. <laughs> so I had to play. You know what? I wanted to play Clutch tonight. Uh, I am waiting for a new Clutch album. I hope one is coming. I'm going to play you a track called In Walks Barbarella by Clutch because how could we talk about Barbarella and the sexual dystopian future and all of the bullshit that we've been doing tonight without Barbarella? Let's do it. Let's play some clutch. I'm going to look up my $20 fake Amazon silicone tit. If that's not full force, nothing is. <laughs> to explain
unplanned, but perfect for this evening. Uh, let me flip back here. Banjo's blaming Canada because of course he is. It seems, that seems pretty logical to me. Uh, we have found a perfect set. I could go halfers with someone. Anybody need a single silicone breast? I mean, if you do, don't necessarily tell me. I don't want to know. I'm not going to judge you. But yes, here you go. I found some on Amazon. They're $42 for the pair. So, you know, I mean, it's pretty, uh, there's probably some cheaper ones. I was going for realism. It's okay if mine's not movie quality. <laughs> Oh gosh. Hey, welcome to the halfway point of the show. My name is Crimson Glad. I am hemorrhaging listeners, but I do see Al Pacino Art has joined us. Hey, Al Pacino. I hope you're doing good. Uh, is it a free range? Is it a free range titty? Non-GMO? Um, well, it's made of silicone, so it's probably not been genetically modified. No. So in that case, if you need a cutlet, man, I got you. I got you. So, you know, we're at the point in the show where inevitably someone turns our attention to... <laughs> Is something ridiculous and uh right now it's silicone titties because we are pre-deciding for halloween that we are going to go as our most beloved dystopian future retro sci-fi characters for women that is the three uh the three boobid girl <laughs> or potentially lulu dallas someday i'm gonna do that if i ever get not fat that's the goal um, or if you're a man, then you get to choose Zardoz or Sting's winged codpiece from Dune. Those are your choices. Did someone say titties? We did. So that's where we're at. And also a little bit later in the show, um, as an apology for missing last week and also some super fun, uh, <laughs> Clay, uh, as some super fun uh, kind of recognition of moving some of the fun aspects of the show forwards i'm gonna give away one of the titty shirts it's not made yet i have to find the right company to do drop shipping i'm not going to print full force merch and keep it on hand at first i am gonna work on a print on demand basis so that's cool full force merch um is actually coming and something else that's kind of exciting um marco did some help for me earlier and he trimmed out one of my episodes but i actually also did get somebody else as well um, who wants to take on potentially editing all my future shows down so they can be, you need to wear the titty shirt with the three titties costume. Yes, you guys are all on the same page. So I gotta send Marco some hi for doing it. Um, but I found somebody who wants to take on editing these shows and editing them, editing Full Force Radio and Cyberbuzz into something that can be posted and shared. So potentially actually having videos that don't get taken down by YouTube and Twitch or by, you know, uh, the powers that be, you know, nuking all my content because we say titties so much and because we're constantly being rude and, you know, playing music in ways that they don't like. So that's cool. Um, but yeah, so if you guys have a suggestion for a print on demand company that you think is good, that would be something that we could potentially, very rare is their consensus on Discord. And you gotta level up on that. Yeah, okay. I, I will, I will drink, I will. <laughs> very rarely is there consensus on Discord, unless we're talking about titties. In which case, I feel a little dirty. Did Mackenzie Gary leave? He did, okay, phew. I don't like talking about sexual things in front of, uh, in front of the cult leader. I'm not gonna lie, <laughs> but, if we're gonna find consensus, it is going to be around boobies. It is, that's how it works. It's just, I don't know, it's an unwritten rule of full force radio. Mm. Uh, so, if, <coughs> if you have a suggestion for a print on demand place that you either find trustworthy, that you've used yourself, that you're happy with, let me know because I do wanna start working on some of this stuff. Um, I want my killer full force logo shirts, but I do want to send somebody titties in the mail. I just want to send you titties in the mail. That one hurt. Yeah, you're telling me, Normok. Jesus. <laughs> so for those of you who weren't here, um, no, and Marco, it's not that I'm choosing someone over you. It's that somebody is insane and has offered to like actually put together a media strategy around it um you did it out of the goodness of your heart so i'm gonna pay you because you're awesome um but yeah somebody basically stepped up and said hey i'll help you plan out 
Twitter blasts and, you know, clipping certain videos for certain channels and getting them posted and just um, doing all the things that I don't have time to do. I have briefly thought about quitting witnessing and becoming full time live streaming and, and this kind of thing and being a content creator again. Uh, but I'm not quite there yet. I don't know. I love Hive too much. So we're going to we're going to see. For now, continuing on, and somebody else is going to do some of the heavy lifting, and hopefully I'm going to be able to provide them with work, and they're going to provide me with cool stuff, and together we're going to do some interesting things. Um, so that's that's the plan. We'll see. Ron was right. Oh, that's right. You plan on posting that. Oh, and that's such an awkward day, too. But yes, I'm glad you got it. So if you guys are trying to figure out what the fuck is Krim talking about with titties, a week, a three-titty Twitter blast... <laughs> That sounds like some kind of really uncomfortable sex move. The th the three titty Twitter. <laughs> I can't even say it. A t t t t the titty Twitter. <laughs> Jesus. So it came up because I had actually been wearing a shirt by this guy. This is unrequited. I was wearing this shirt. I was wearing a black metal shirt and I was playing the music for you. And everybody was laughing because nobody could read it. And I'm going, of course you can read it. Look at how easy it is to read. Like. That's, that's easy to read, right? Like if I focus the camera on it, you can understand. And everybody was like, no. And so we had this joke that, well, if we're going to put something on your chest that you can't read, let's make it funny. And, you know, the titty shirt was there. It was done. Check in on your Oregon friends. Yeah, I don't, I don't go to the States right now. I have no interest, but I hope they're good. But I'm not taking that trip. Our borders are close to them, and I don't know if we can go down, but I have no... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a pass on that, frankly. <laughs> oh. um, but so anyways, that's what's happening. Is So then we decided we're going to do something like this, titties inspired by black metal and death metal logos. It's going to be super fun. I'm going to send a shirt to someone. So with that being said, with that being said, how do we determine who wins a shirt tonight? How do we determine this? Because you guys are the ones that are here. You're the ones hanging out. Some of you won't wear it, so you're not going to want to enter. Um, but I want to decide who's going to be the first person to get this terrible titties, the titty twister, Twitter, twit twat, three boobid shirt chat jam. See, we started talking about tits and we drove Mackenzie Gary away. I swear, that's what happened. Um, but so how do we do it? Should we play a round of dice bitches? I mean, that's Agrod's thing. I don't want to step on his toes. Should we do a draw? Should we do some, I don't know. What do you guys want? Should we do some kind of dorky little competition for it? I'm going to foot the bill. I'm going to print you a shirt in your size, print it, send it to you on demand um, sometime in the next week. So you guys let me know how you want to get your titty shirt. Let's continue uh, playing some actual fucking music in the meantime. So we did play uh, some clutch. We've been all over the place. We we're going to play some dancey style metal. We've played some crazy medieval metal. Um, I'm going to play something somewhere in between um, sort of black melodeath, a little bit tinged with medieval again, stuff that I've been listening to over the last week. I have something by a band called Aether Realm. And these guys, um, <laughs> they are out of the US I want to say North Carolina so there's another band in the US that's really taking on what has traditionally been like a European metal thing which is like folk style metal these guys have toured all over the US all over Canada they've toured with Ailstorm Necrogoblicon they've toured all over the um sort of festival circuit in Europe as well it's really cool to see American bands taking on some of this more traditional metal stuff so I'm gonna play something by Aether Realm called Death. It's been on my mind. It's been in my playlist. I've got lots of fun stuff for you tonight. Um, but I'm going to play this and then I'm going to move into some Insomnium, another band uh, that is close to my heart, one of my favorites. And we will move into not quite the last hour, but we're getting there. The last hour of Full Force Radio tonight. We're talking about movies, inevitably about Halloween. What's going to look different for Halloween this year? Because everything's fi fighting to the death is the only option. That's right. It's motherfucking full force Thunderdome. If you could figure out how to accurately have two men enter, one men leave into a, a Discord match, then I'm all for Thunderdome. I'll be, uh, I'll be anti. I'll be anti. I'll be Tinta Turnter. I got all sorts of legs over here. 
all of my legs. It's weird because when I move back from the camera, if you're watching the crim cam, if you're not, it's fine. But when I move back from the camera, like my shorts, let's fix those. I get stumpy, I've noticed. There's something about the aspect ratio that when I'm here, I'm normal sized. And as I move back from the camera, I get smaller and squatter. It's and whiter, but that's probably not the camera. That's just me. I, I don't know. I haven't figured it out yet. So I'm just gonna stay here, but I have legs. I have boobs, I have a lot of hair, and I'm really loud. I'll be your Tina Turner for the night. Tina Turn Turn. <laughs> All right, let me play you something by Aether Realm. We'll come back, we'll decide who's getting a fucking shirt. Who's getting a titty shirt? You better wear it proudly. I'm gonna be annoyed if you don't wear it proudly.
out Aether Realm. It's off an album called Tarot, and it's a track called Death. And the blast beats in it are just, they're music to my soul. I love, I love good fucking, yeah, see? Chat check, Kodaks of Vim TV. If this is something that we should bring up, because a lot of you guys don't realize it, and it's one of those things. No shit! Shit. <laughs> All right, so let me put this out there because I do have people who listen everywhere. And I, sometimes I'm like, oh, so-and-so didn't show up. And they're like, yeah, you fucker. I was there the whole time. Here's the deal. If you want to chat, you absolutely should. If you're watching on Twitch, if you're watching on YouTube, if you're watching on Theta, if you're watching on Vim... All of those places are piped back in. We have a bot that coordinates all of the chat. So if you want to be part of the show, but you're like, oh, Krim doesn't watch when I'm over on Twitch. I do. I do. We have a bot. We could do it. Ah, but you don't see anybody else's chat. Well, here's the deal. Uh, replies going back to Vim are in the works, but I do have it in the video as well. Now, one of the things, you're such a tech loser. Well, then it's perfect that you're here on the blockchain with us. <laughs> <laughs> but that being said, no big deal. It happens for you. So the reality is, is if you're watching the show and you are not sure if you should say something because it's intimidating, just do it. Just hang out. Just throw some conversation in chat. It's all fun. The whole show is driven by your guys' interaction. Um, I'm the lamest DJ if you guys don't want to chat. So, you know, anytime you want to, like, come on air and hang out and talk or if you've got an idea for a show or you just want to tell me I suck in chat, you can do that. We had an entire... Uh... <laughs> We had an entire episode. I think it honestly started with like Fox telling me to get off the air and put Make It Stuff back on. And then, <laughs> and then the whole episode was just basically everybody being like, oh no, we don't really actually want Krim here. So, you know, it's fine. It's fine. Whatever you want to throw in chat, just do it as it moves you. Just go with the flow. Oh, done. You pretend to hate me? I, I oh no. <laughs> Regardless, the reality is, is have, yeah, fuck Krim. Say whatever you want, do whatever you want, be part of the show. It's more fun that way. It really is. Um, so we're doing all sorts of fun stuff tonight. That was uh, some death tinged folk from a band called Aether Realm. And I'm a big fan. I really like this album. And I have, honestly, I keep coming back to sort of, yeah, some Memento Mori death tinged kind of tracks this last week. Um, when I'm sad, I listen to music. When I'm angry, I listen to music. When I'm happy, I listen to music. And so a lot of the stuff that I pick up in one way or another is really cathartic. Now, all the stuff in this week um, is either new or emotive, just stuff that's been in rotation for me. I do plan to move back into the more sort of curated topic based shows. But for tonight, who gives a fuck? So I thought we'd move into um, we'd move into the last hour. You didn't even know there was a chat. <laughs> ha! Well, there you go. That's excited. Oh, every time you say fun stuff, I think she said my name, but in Canadian. <laughs> Apparently in Canada, we say does is fuzz. It's possible. I mean, I don't have an accent. You have an accent. But if you hear me saying your name, it's very possible I am. I just want you to remember that the drunker I get, the worse I say your names. I mean, I see Normok, and all I can think, for the love of God, all I could think is Darmok, Angelad, at Tanagra. That's all I could think of. And I, it's, there's no correlation whatsoever. But that's what I see. And I'm all like, oh, fuck yeah, Normok. <laughs> it's... Listen, listen, it's a rite of passage. At least you're not like, what's his name? FBSL. I wreck his name every week. So let's continue. Let's play some more music. Um, I Jason is here, and Jason is theoretically probably still a... Jason's not here. The fuck? Every time I go to get and play Jason music, he disappears. I actually had some stuff that I wanted to play for him tonight. Now, Jason is a little bit of a punk thrash kind of fan. And so I actually wanted to play something for him by a band called Ocean Horse. Now, they are from Finland, uh, but the way that they describe their music is, uh, we're Ocean Horse, we're from Finland, and we play heavy fucking metal. They have a sort of thrashy, punky edge to their music. It's a little bit more... Uh, a little bit more vivacious, a little bit more in your face. And I get the feeling it'd be something that, yeah, one of the best episodes of TNG. 
<laughs> every TNG episode is great. When you look at it through the proper lens, every episode of TNG is great. Some are actually not so great. But again, nostalgia. Nostalgia plays into it. And it's a delight. So Jason's not here, but that's fine. I'm still going to play this music. I'm going to play some of my Ocean Horse. Um, they have this sort of cool, like, Cthulhu tentacle kind of vibe. They love... Uh, skulls with tentacles, which I've, I can I can I, I can fuck with that. That's that's definitely also my aesthetic. Um, and they actually did put out a new track called Locks, uh, the beginning of September, maybe end of August, not that long ago, like a couple weeks. But I'm not gonna play that track. I am gonna play um, I'm gonna play a track by them called The Intruder, and uh, I'm gonna put it on now. I'm gonna zhuzh us up. We're gonna we're gonna move into the last hour with some high energy. I do have some ballads. I have some slower tracks. We'll see where we're at. We'll have some fun, and uh, we'll continue with Full Force Radio. My name is Crimson Clad on Thursday nights, Friday mornings, whatever time it is for you. Right now, I play metal. We talk shit. Tonight's been movies, the retro future, and slutty Halloween costumes for a COVID-wrecked Halloween that may not exist. Uh, everybody is going as sexy, slutty, Zardoz, Sean Connery. That's that's just what's happening. Just get used to it. Just accept it. <laughs>
Jason, I don't know if that's up your alley, but uh, I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan of Ocean Horse. I'm a big fan. Uh, they have got some punk energy to them. And hey, Sherry, Sherry, Sherry has joined us. Hi to everybody else who is leaving. Let's be realistic. I'm hemorrhaging listeners at this point. It gets a little late. We keep banding about we're going to shorten the show to two hours. We probably are, especially if we start reposting properly cut ones and we actually do some marketing and I have some help with this we probably will condense the stream a little bit but you know that night is not tonight so listen up we've been having a lot of fun we've just been playing some music I'm kind of bouncing back from a particularly tough week I'm sure all of you guys are I know so many people who have been listening or visiting tonight you've got your own shit going on in your lives much uh much super duper love to you um so yeah, Shari. Uh, <laughs> but the reality is, uh, you know, you listen to music, you have a good time, you get through it, and uh, we we have a little fun here on Full Force Radio. So let us continue down this road. We've been talking about books and movies and the dystopian retro future. We started off at Robocop and we meandered pretty much everywhere. Um, now Clay has been reading a bunch of cyberpunk inspired novels, and some of them are movies, some of them aren't. I'm definitely here for the uh, the tweet that I posted up above. Mackenzie Geary actually tagged me during the show, and it is drone footage of San Francisco, but it's got that Blade Runner... Um, <laughs> it's got that Blade Runner soundtrack attached to it. And so it's that terrifying orange glow, that aesthetic. Why be stable when we can listen to metal? I think you can be both. Why not both? But I mean, realistically, uh, metal is great for shaking out some of the less stable emotions that you just need to express. Mariano is having a hell of fun with the terrible cyberpunk uh, memes, and they're amazing. Clay's like, I read things. Krim mentioned my name. <laughs> you do. But you've been on, you've been kind of on a kick now where you've been reading a bunch of sort of dystopian cyberpunkish novels. So I just figured, you know, you've probably got some. But we talked a little bit um, about Stalker. We talked about uh, Jodorowsky's Dune. We talked about the original Dune. We talked, oh, that one's a great hack. That's a brilliant one, Mariano. <laughs> Um, and so that's just kind of where we're at tonight. We're having a little fun kind of imagining the terrifying retro future and uh, lamenting that we might actually be headed straight for it. I don't know if everybody's ready or not, but it doesn't matter. You don't get to be ready or not. It's, it's not about that. You don't get to be ready. It's here. Um, you know, so we talked about this on Saturday but we were talking a little bit about how in the original RoboCop, the idea is, is the government is in bed with big corporations. Big corporations and the government are trying to sow dissent in the sort of local populace and the local gangs because they want riots and crime levels to go up. They want to drive the uh, sort of residential housing and real estate market prices down so they can collect up a bunch of cheap real estate. And they also want to privatize a bunch of things like law enforcement. And it's like, oh, 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 shit. And all of a sudden you're like, huh, that had, that had never happened in real life, right? Guys? So at this point, I am just waiting for somebody to pull out the three seashells. <laughs> yes, and we're talking about Judge Jed. Judge Dredd is another fucking fabulous one. I am the law! <laughs> the most recent one actually wasn't bad. You know, Clay, again, I, I liked both the new Robocop and the new Judge Dredd. I just didn't think they were better than their predecessors. But, you know, like on their own as, you know, blow up, cool, like better aesthetics... Yeah, okay, fun. They just can't replace the originals. There's just something so delightful about the originals. But, you know, I mean, again, I'm robocop I'm RoboCop obsessed. Bring on the 50-year mortgages. Yeah, we're all going to live in, like, giant concrete towers that can be locked down. They hold 
you know, 16,000 families and are divided, subdivided into like small ghettos on their own. They have armor shielding on the outside and can be like manipulated. And, oh man, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> oh man, I'm not saying we're headed there, but could we potentially be there? Are we there? Could we get there? I don't know. I'm not saying. I'm just saying. So we're in the last hour of the show tonight. I did want to, they're called prisons. <laughs> Fuck. Fuck. Well, you know, yeah. And, and, you know, Gabriel's got a really good point. You know, it's amazing with that description. That's what Poland and other Eastern Bloc countries were full of. And, you know, parts of, wow. Wow, Darsica. Wow. So many breasts in chat. Um, but you're right. Yeah. It, and when you think about sort of like the commie, the, the sort of, terrifying um, communist aesthetic, we start thinking about this sort of thing. And, you know, Poland, I spent some time in Poland and I went to, um, I went to Bruno, which, yeah, roughly translates to, I think, like dirty, the dirtiness, I think you corrected me. Um, but I spent time there and you're right. They are just these concrete squares packed upon, packed upon, packed full of people. It's something. Hey, bleep. Good to see you, man. So, you know, I mean, I'm not saying we're heading there, but maybe we are. Klepki. Oh, okay. So the reality is maybe we are heading for some kind of future that, oh, spicy chat's full of boobs. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. What are you guys doing? Oh, you guys are all hanging out in spicy chat. Oh, okay. Oh, you want us to put them in spicy chat. I understand. All right. Fair enough. Regardless, uh, same in Geneva, apparently, but mostly empty streets. Yeah. And, you know, even like I think of high density Asian countries where you've got sort of modular homes that are concrete. Like I believe it's Japan where they've got these little sort of concrete cubicles that kind of actually, yeah, brutalist architecture. Exactly. Viking adventure. Um, they actually like flip out and they move and they sometimes follow the sun. And it's like, OK, OK. I get it, but at the same time, you still live in this tiny concrete cube. And we see a lot of that in these sort of uh, retro techno future as well, like the dystopian techno future. You know, all of the Blade Runner habitats are just concrete, tiny squares. You know, all of the Neo Tokyo domiciles are these tiny little cubicles with nothing but like a hologram to keep you company and, and that sort of thing. It's crazy. It's... It's like we've always known and been concerned about this and it's always expressed itself in our um, in our sort of cultural lexicon. It's creepy. It's weird. It's cool. It's interesting. It's terrifying. I don't know, man. All right. So if boobs are chestnuts, proof of boob is nut pick. <laughs> We're having some fun sort of verbal uh, wordplay in chat. I'm going to continue on. We got to play a little bit more music. We've only got like an hour left. So, yeah, I mean, I'm just saying there's probably some lessons that we can learn if we really did predict all of these sort of future aesthetics and future possibilities. Maybe, maybe, just maybe we should be mildly terrified about some of these um, similarities that are coming up. We talked a little bit about DARPA. Like if you think about OCP and the opening of RoboCop when they have the sort of big, crazy um, police bot that comes obviously before Robocop that freaks its shit out and, and, uh, ends up killing that CEO. Maybe we should be a little concerned about some of the paths that we're taking. I mean, I'm not, I'm not suggesting that it's all bad, but I am saying, do we know what we're doing and are we prepared for what could come? Because it feels like we are finally stepping into the world that the 80s sort of laid in wait for us. And uh, I'm concerned about where it's going to go. <laughs> Bleep posted a super cool tower. Brutalist architecture that's near him. That's very cool. Very weird. Very interesting. I know there's definitely a lot of buildings like that in Montreal. And if you know some near you, I'd totally like to see them. They're cool. Like they're interesting. Would I like to live in one? No. Yes, maybe, I don't know, but they're fascinating to look at. In any case, let's play some goddamn music. That's why you're here. And definitely not because I'm going to potentially have three tits someday. Um, <laughs> but I told you guys I was going to play some more 
of this weird idea of Finnish dance metal. And this actually came up because as I was going through the releases this week, on Fridays, one of my favorite things to do every Friday is I go through new music. I have mailing lists that I'm on. I've got Spotify lists that I follow, artists that I follow. One of my favorite things to do every week is go through new releases. And one of the bands that I have been following and kind of paying attention to is a band called Vutsa. Now, I may not be saying it right, because who fucking knows? They're Finnish. I can't read their discography. I can't read their description because it's all in Finnish. And if you've ever seen Finnish as a language, oh my God, there's a trillion Ks and as many vowels as you can possibly cram into a sentence. So I don't know. I don't know. Literally on their Spotify, it says the story of Vutsa. And then it's <laughs> so, you know, your guess is as good as mine. And I didn't do any extra research. But it's this weird crossover party metal. It's EDM beats. It's Finnish death rapping. And it's like heavy guitars. And I can't decide if I like it or not. I'm not 100% sure, but I put it on this week and I ended up listening to it multiple times and I ended up really fucking tapping my feet. You're just here to stare at Crim Cam. Yeah, nobody actually wants to listen to my music or hang out with me. It's cool. I mean, it's flattering that people are cool with the Crim Cam, but if I didn't have it, maybe nobody would show up. So maybe it's less flattering. I don't know. I'm going to, I'm not going to think about it right now, but for the reality is, is I'm going to play you guys some more of this like weird EDM dance metal because it's really really interesting and I think I like it a lot but I'm not a hundred percent sure so the best way to decide is to add it to a playlist for you guys and see what you think some of the stuff that I've played like this in the past you guys have really fucking enjoyed so in that case let's give it a shot it's Finnish dance metal it's FDM not EDM this is full force radio my name is Crimson Clad every week I play heavy metal and loud music and we talk shit and uh you know Maybe we're just all going to die in a RoboCop dystopian future. Or maybe there's still hope if we learn our lessons now and uh, we shut down Skynet before it gets too, too far along. I don't know. I don't know. What's Place your bets. 2020, man. Fucking 2020. <laughs>
so there you go. Is it confusing? Yes. Do I like it? I don't know. Do you like it? It's Finnish EDM death dance fucking... I don't know. I don't know. I think it's video game music. I'm not sure. I really am confused. But I think I like it. I think. Maybe. <laughs> So anyways, hey, it's Full Force Radio. I saw Reg put an emoji in the chat, but I can't see what the emoji is. So hey, Reg, thanks for leveling up. Thanks for hanging out. I don't know if you're still here. It was also uh, an emoji called nominal, which makes me think that you were possibly telling me that you didn't like it at all. <laughs> mm, yes, and actually I was thinking of putting some Combi Christ on tonight's track, specifically because we did kind of go down the dancey route. But yeah, quite a few people liked it, so there you go. It sounds like I could sneak it in every now and again if I needed to, right? Right? Maybe? I don't know. All right, so hey, we're in the last hour of the show. We've been talking about three-titted retro future dystopian Halloween costumes. We've been uh, just hanging out, having fun, playing some music tonight. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's that's it. Everybody gets to choose between Sexy Zardoz, Sexy Sting, Barbarella, uh, Sexy Lilu, Dallas Multipass. Uh, what else? What else did we decide? Or three-titted, obviously, three-titted alien broad. And we actually did look up the cost of silicone tits. I do need to uh, split one of you if you want to do it. Uh, but I have to admit, chat is now full of Robocop again, which brings me great joy. Uh, but it's homemade, <laughs> homemade Robocop costumes. And there are some pretty fucking spectacular ones in chat right now, I have to say. It is, uh, it's basically like, get you, get you some cardboard, get you some duct tape and tinfoil, and have at her. I'm not gonna lie, some of these are magical. Now, I've talked about my love for Robocop at length. You guys know my dog's named after Robocop. You know, my Valentine's Day tradition is to either go to a metal show or go to see Robocop. That's like the greatest love story of all time. Um, and overall, like Robocop is my thing. I have to admit, uh, I've never done a Robocop costume and now I'm kind of thinking about it. I'm kind of thinking about it. But it, the other thing that we talk about on the show so much is like the homemade sort of like home brewed love for Robocop and how there is specifically the version called our Robocop, like as in ours, as in, oh, Wait, what? Actress who played Three Rested Mutant Hooker in Total Recall. Totally Recalli. Yeah, Robocop is genius. It's fucking amazing. I agree, bleep. And so that's kind of where we started this night and every night. But often I talk about the version called our Robocop. And it was sort of this idea that um, everybody loves Robocop. Everybody has this vision of Robocop. Everybody enjoys it. And everybody has like a part of the story that they consider theirs. And so there is a version that is a bunch of people doing their own. Oh, I just looked at my camera and I can see I've got dog hair all over me. What else is new? Um, that everybody is doing their own version of it. And the whole sort of movie, the R Robocop, no, not R is in Reddit, but R is in ours. We own it. And it's basically a bunch of amateur and pro-am filmmakers who have created their own version. Hey, Leonis! Uh, who created their own version. And they recreate it shot for shot. And then they combine them all together. So it's this gigantic mishmash. And you guys will remember it because I always bring it up. Specifically because of the fact that there is the gratuitous dick shooting version. And so our Robocop is every scene in the movie was taken by another fan. And that, uh, <laughs> and that this, um, this scene of the infamous dick shooting, uh, was extrapolated by a pro-am filmmaker. They get as many prosthetic penises as could possibly ever be found. Um, and they reshoot the scene and it's fucking hilarious. But the whole movie is this like, Oh yeah, I could totally rock that. I agree. I yeah, sure. I'm here for it. I I could be corseted Robocop et. 
I mean, although I will tell you that I I hate costumes for girls that are made like so, like to make a character into girls. So like I went as a war boy one year and I just went as a war boy. I just dressed in dirty rags and sprayed fucking silver shit all over my face and screamed at people and it was fabulous. I mean, maybe I should have done it in a push-up bra, but I don't know. It was fun. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm living for these amazing fucking cardboard RoboCop outfits. They're fabulous. So, you know, if you haven't seen our RoboCop, it's been at least like five episodes since I've talked about how 50,000 men get shot in the dick. <laughs> Give us a good dance to see. Reggie, Reggie, are you here for the music or are you here because I have some assets? Maybe. I don't know. I'm glad that you're sticking around, though. So... <laughs> Chat is full of pictures, memes, Robocop. You have 20 seconds to comply. Fabulous. If you haven't seen, let me type it, our Robocop. It's worth it. It's fun. It's kind of like that movie Be Kind Rewind. I think I always bring this up. And it's basically just people's like love letter to Robocop. It's terrible and amazing all at once. But if you watch anything, watch the dick shooting scene. Watch the dick shooting scene. If you're squeamish, just heads up. There are, are hundreds of exploding dicks. But it's the funniest thing ever. I don't, I don't even fucking care. It's the funniest thing I've ever seen. It's just dick after dick after dick after dick getting shot and exploding. And, you know, Robocop's just like Robocoping around. And, the you know, in the original Robocop, the rapist kind of like comes creeping out of the background. He's just like, hey, 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 I'm a rapist. And he kind of comes creeping in. And in the, our Robocop version, like by the third guy, he's just pantsless already. He's just standing there and he's like, hey and like air humping with his dick out and uh by by the next you know the next scene there's like 300 naked men just racing in a feminist's fantasy no not really but oh my god it's the best it's the funniest thing it offends everyone which means it's fucking delightful to me uh you know it makes people real angry which means it's art <laughs> let's continue yes Thank you. Ron's got it. If you ever need a robo dick, Ron is right there. Um, so let's continue because we don't have that much time left. I've only got like 40-ish minutes left in the show. I've played some weird shit tonight. We've had some dancey whatever, like EDM finish black metal. We've gone everywhere from Aizan to Clutch to Gojira. Um, and we will continue all over the place as well. So I do want to play, um, I want to play some Insomnium. I want to play some Catatonia. I want to play uh, something a little fun. And of course, I want to end up with Iron Maiden. So we'll see how far we get. I am going to play something by a group called Probot. And I was looking for something a little funny, something to lighten the mood. And Dave Grohl is uh, obviously, he's all over the place. He's a metal god in that uh, proto-metal with bands like Nirvana and Foo Fighters and whatever. You know, He's, he's always tried to get his bands like the Foo Fighters to play alongside metal royalty. He's always, always, always worshipped other, oh, wow, that's, that's a cool toast. <laughs> cool toast. I fucking love toast. Is that a sexy toast? Oh, God, we're going to have so much fun with the slutty Halloween episode, you guys. I'm excited thinking forwards to the, ha to the slutty Halloween episode. But so here's the deal. The, uh, they're just whatever for me, but I, I know a lot of people love the Foo Fighters. But Dave Grohl is a special fucking human being. Dave Grohl worships other artists and he worships metal artists. And so he's constantly been trying to get Nirvana, um, for Nirvana, they were trying to, he was trying to convince uh, Nirvana to have Sepultura open for them. That's fucking amazing. Um, when he was touring with Foo, Foo Fighters early, they and he ended up trying to get them on bills with Pantera and Black Sabbath at Ozfest. And he's always been a cult metal fan. And so if you've ever watched, um, you know, something like, say, The Pick of Destiny, um, you will recognize, oh yeah, that's a lewd, he's, look at him, he's a leering toast, I fucking love it, it's delightful. Reg, I think you're gonna get along real just fine here. Hey, Marky! And so, you know, one of the things that, um, Dave Grohl is known for is he's always sort of 
love to express this. And so if you've ever watched, say, like, obviously, Tenacious D and the Pick of Destiny, he's the devil. I'm the devil. I love metal. And the, like, infamous shot of him fucking, you know, talking about jizzing all over Cage's face. He's always felt that way. He loves, you know, Merciful Fate and Motorhead and Iron Maiden. And and he's always trying to kind of work that into even just his rock and roll career. And so long story short is he actually is part of a group called Probot. And what he wanted to do was get a bunch of singers from metal bands and metal sort of icons and create this weird, fun, 80s metal role-playing band. Long story short, Probot was born. Yeah, Normok, it's not quite as feminist as you thought, right, bro? (laughs) Bye, Marco. So, yeah, I mean, it's, trust me, I like dicks, and I don't want to shoot them. They can shoot off, but I don't want to shoot them. But it's, it's not particularly feminist, don't worry. Many, many dicks were harmed in the shooting of that scene. And it's hilarious. But I don't want your dick to be harmed. Okay? Let's just clear the air. <laughs> oh, Lord. All right. So, yeah, dicks, dicks are nice. Sure, Cherie, dicks are nice. So, continuing down this road, the reason I bring this up, Ron probably definitely did clip that, actually, because I looked right in the camera and was like, I don't want your dick to be hurt. Your dick? Your dick is fine. But so, Probot... Probot is this super fun idea where Grohl is like, I'm going to find, I'm going to find stuff by bands like Celtic Frost and I'm going to find stuff, you know, I'm going to find all of these metal icons and I'm going to lure them into my project. And so he was constantly getting people like Lemmy or King Diamond or, you know, um, what's his name from Voivod? Uh, Snake. And he put together this totally dorky band called Probot. And he wrote a bunch of really sort of like 80s, slightly cheesy, slightly culty, super fun tracks. And he recorded them with a slew of famous people. And so one of the tracks that I want to play for you tonight to kind of, you know, enjoy the less serious side of things um, is a track called I Am The Warlock. And it is Probot. Dave Grohl with Jack Black. It's a perfect fit given that we've literally just been talking about exploding dicks for like 10 minutes and the rest of the show has been about the dystopian retro future and three-titted hookers. I mean that's pretty full force. It's it's, it's pretty standard. I'm gonna say that this pretty much is just even keel for us here. Uh, I'm gonna play I Am The Warlock by Probot and then we're gonna move into some great stuff. Insomnium, Catatonia, and we'll up the irons for the last hug pit of the night. My name is Crimson Clad. I'm here every Thursday night. We play metal. We have a lot of fun. We talk a lot of shit. And uh, in theory, this show's gonna start getting better again because I'm I'm kind of under control. I got some help with it. I've got some motivation and uh, things in my life are clearing up a bit. So Thanks for coming to my first show back, if you want to call it that. It's not like I was away for a long time, but I feel like there was like a pre and an after and we're in the after now and I'm working on it. Um, But we do have to give away a titty shirt. So let's decide how to do it. Okay. During the song, let's figure out how are we going to give away a titty shirt? It's an important, important question. Cannot go unanswered.
Probot, I'm the Warbuck. It is Jack Black. He is going to fuck your life up. Dave Grohl ruins the Emperor logo. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he's, you know, honestly, he's fun. He loves it. And that's what matters, right? It's the reason we do this show. It's the reason all of you are here. At the end of the day, you know, we have a love for it. We have a love for the classics, for these sounds, for these emotions, for these aesthetics. I mean, if I could rock corpse paint every day, I probably would. But I mean, I'm like today I'm not wearing a metal shirt at all. But I mean, I have a spooky, I have a spooky element to my vibe from day to day. I'm a bit of a spooky chick. That's my aesthetic. I love I love weird metal art. I love dark, weird, occultish stuff. I love the sounds. I love everything about it. And uh, it's all good. It's all good in the hood, fam. So that that song reminds me of one of my first D&D characters. Fun! And, you know, I'm actually putting together a D&D &D episode uh, because one of the things about Dungeons & Dragons, and actually it won't just be D&D, &D, it'll be D&D &D and Warhammer, uh, because one of the best death metal bands out there is a band called Boat Thrower, and they're literally uh, inspired by Warhammer. Uh, and there are so many D&D, &D, like... Dungeons and Dragons role-playing fantasy epics out there and Warhammer inspired metal. So yeah, we're going to definitely have some fun with it. Um, we've only got, yes, exactly. D and D I've got, I brought Gabriel's head back into chat. Um, but I do want to keep playing some music. I promised you guys some insomnium, one of my favorite bands of all time. Um, and a band that got hit really 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 yeah glory hammer power glove there is a ton of sort of like cheesy epic power metal that are really um <laughs> yeah I'd, I'd love that done maybe uh maybe you can get codex on that but so for me i'm a mellow death girl i love death metal i like sort of heavier darker angrier types of music and i try to spread it out on this show um but one of the bands that's one of my favorite is Insomnium, and they were putting together, um, they were putting together a tour at the beginning of 2020. And one of the one of the bands they were touring with was Omnium Gatherum. And when this all happened, when the sort of COVID world lockdown global uncertainty happened around um, around traveling and touring and gathering and live music, um, their tour fell through and they had already paid for all their tickets. They'd already paid for all their merch. They had paid for everything and losing the tour honestly put the future of the band in jeopardy. And this to me is terrifying and fascinating and horrible because, you know, as big as they are overseas in Europe, here they are trying to make a name for themselves in North America and trying to break borders. And they end up actually putting themselves way back. And, and what the future looks like for metal is very uncertain. So I always kind of want to, um, I always want to support these guys where I can. So I probably have more insomnia merch than is actually healthy, to be quite honest. Um, but what I'm going to do, oh, this Babely, Babely Babes in chat and some really cool, um, some really cool art that uh, Gabriel's finding. But let's let's kind of go into this. I want to play an Insomnium track, and um, it's off one of my favorite albums of theirs. The new one is fabulous, don't get me wrong. Winter's Gate is fabulous. Um, one for Sorrow. I, I love everything they've ever done, but there is something about the album Shadows of the Dying Sun that is potentially one of my favorite albums of all time. So I'm going to play a track off that album because it's been a while and that's sad. So I need you to listen to some Insomnium, motherfuckers. I'm going to play a track called While We Sleep. We'll move into some Catatonia and we'll finish up with some Iron Maiden. My name is Crimson Cloud. This is Full Force Radio every Thursday, Friday, whatever the fuck time it is that you're watching this in the future or the past, whether or not you have a Robocop in your uh, current timeline or not. Uh, I'm here on MSP Waves. You can find the full schedule at mspwaves.com or you could find out more about the show at fullforce.rocks. We're not done yet, but you only have about half an hour left, so make it count. That opening! Yeah!
Oh, there you go. One of my favorite tracks. I mean, almost every song on Shadows of the Dying Sun is a piece of my heart, honestly. Um, but that track is super special to me. So hopefully you guys like it as much as I do. Um, it's a beautiful horrible painful uplifting soul crushing track and uh i always go back to that album when i need to uh yes one window archway for each tit because i will indeed have three um but yeah so i basically i have a bunch of insomnia merch on the way i bought a bunch of the stuff that they had printed for this tour that was canceled and knowing that they like every other band out there can't uh can't feed their roadies and whatever, I mean, I've saved up as much money as I can and I buy a bunch of merchandise. It's just what I do. But admittedly, <sighs> oh my God. <laughs> so, hey, Fox is just joining us. Good morning, Fox. Yeah, that's pretty much me. Uh, and for everybody else, we're coming close to the end of the show. We got about 20 minutes left, not quite, 15 minutes. Um, so I'm going to play you guys some new Catatonia uh, and I'm going to... <laughs> accurate that's actually insomnium which is funny metalheads are all evil and worship the devil also metalheads so that is from mariano that picture of insomnium is uh well they were filming for the newest album and they have this insanely beautiful video um for a song called valediction and the the whole thing is like this like love of nature where they live and that's honestly it is they're always you know watching the sun rise and loving on each other and being fucking dorky and uh metal is my safe happy place i have to say i know not everybody feels that way but um i love every part of metal even the little weird devil worshipy occulty witchy bits right down to the wild pagan rituals to the cheesy hairspray glam uh it's just it suits me and it's why i do this show mad mad love uh but insomnium i highly recommend you check out their whole discography if you're not if you don't have time for all of it the newest um the newest album and the shadows of the dying sun album so heart like a grave and shadows of the dying sun are two spectacular albums if you've got time past that then winter's gate is also good um i love them very much and i hope you do too so before the day is over. I'm going to play you guys some new Catatonia. They have put out a new album called City Burials. It is spectacular. It came out at the end of April. Um, they are one of Sweden's probably biggest and most famous metal bands, which is saying something, given that Sweden uh, is obviously always been a critical and crucial part of metal. Um, and they've had this really interesting career where they started off like doomy, um, and they've gotten more melodic over time. They've settled into their sound. They've settled into their talents. And they've started creating something that is more melodic, more harmonic. And it's just so polished and so beautiful. And this new album, City Burials, is spectacular. So I want to play something off it. Um, and I do kind of want to encapsulate. I totally agree, Viking Adventure. Like, you just get me. It's why we've become friends, which is kind of wild. Like, thinking about that, most of you, I only know you through this show. Um, and yet you have become such an important and fun part of my life. And that's fabulous. It's fabulous. Um, so, yeah, I do want to play something by Catatonia. Um, and I want to play something that obviously, um, yeah, my head's been in a weird space in terms of like love lost and, you know, family and broken connections and death and these things that unite us all as humans, um, whether they're happy or not. And so I want to play a track called The Winter of Our Passing. We'll come back. We will finish up with Iron Maiden. I just want to put a really quick, small, small, short catatonia track in your ears. We'll come back. We will decide once and for all on who gets the t-shirt and we'll end with some Iron Maiden by popular vote tonight here on Full Force Radio. <laughs>
You go so off brand new album called city burials it is a masterpiece if you are a fan of catatonia um or you're a fan of more melodic uh style metal things that have some very sort of melancholy aspects to them i highly recommend that album oh it cuts me Woof. cuts me right to the quick it's a beautiful beautiful track and and uncomfortable as well you know Disregard the soul, heart is made of mist, and still, it's thinning. Bad news for you is, we're fucked. You don't know where we're headed next. <laughs> Oof! Oof! Uh, Ron's getting called stinky in chat, which is fair. He's stinky and he has a big head. Um, so we do. We need to decide who's going to get the TD shirt. I do. I don't care. I will ship it to anywhere in the world. I will use a print-on-demand company. I will cover shipping. I will cover the cost of it. I will get everything done. You will have to trust me with your address or with P.O. Box. Um, so the problem with that is I may or may not send you uh, live bees. But if you're okay with that, then, you know, it is what it is. So here's the deal. We have to decide uh, who's going to get it. Ideally, I would like for you to... Um, I have Ron... I know, I promised I'd give you one because, because Ron puts up with my shit. Like, honestly, last week, I really did think I was going to do a show. Um, and then, you know, um, life and loss got in the way. And mentally, I was not in a good enough place to do a show. Uh, it takes a lot of effort for me to do this with you. Um, and I'm very tired by the end of it. But I'm always a good tired, or usually a good tired. Um, but last week, I was not in a headspace where I would have entertained you and probably not in a headspace where I would have ended up okay so we skipped it so yes I told Ron I'd send him a shirt for putting up with my shit so it's fine he doesn't even need to be in it so realistically let's figure this out do we want to do a dice roll do we want to do like a random selection we've got bots for both um and realistically I only enter if you will actually wear a shirt with a death metal logo on it. It does not, I'm not spoiling the surprise and many of you are, um, you know, fake newsing right now. So if it's something that you want, it's pretty awesome. It's going to have an almost illegible death metal logo. It will say titties. It'll be a black shirt with white writing uh, and I will mail it directly to you. So let's d1 uh d100 yeah we could do that we could do closest to a dice roll and everybody like locks in their guesses we could do that um or we could dice bitches we could dice bitches <laughs> and yeah i'll cover the cost i'll cover everything um because it's print on demand i won't be able to send you anything special along with it which kind of sucks um but yeah could we should be dice bitches how do we dice bitches i'm gonna get Clay only wears clothes from the thrift shop. Clay's not willing to rock my brand. That's fine. I understand. Uh, okay, so I'm not 100% sure how Gabriel won Dice Bitches, given that we didn't start around. But Ron, are you able to handle a Dice Bitches? I am going to start up a heckin' long... Oh, no, it's long and involved. Fuck that shit. Are you going to wear it first? Uh, I mean, it's print on demand, so no. I can't rub my stink on it for you. I'm sorry. Um... Oh, you started one? So people just have to roll? All right, Ron, can you get people, if you wanna win a shirt, 
fucking do that command, okay? Just do it. Do the command. I am going to play a longer Iron Maiden track. Ron is keeping an eye on things. Uh, I really did want to play the red and a black, but it's a little too long. So we are going to follow back to, um, let's see. Should it be Hallowed Be My Name? That's one of my favorites. Let me pick an Iron Maiden track we haven't played for a while, which, I mean, is hard because all I play is Iron Maiden. But let's go out with a bang. Let's get back to maybe somewhere back in time or seventh son of a seventh son. Let's see how much time I've got left. <sighs> Not enough. Not enough. Uh, I am going to play. Da -da 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 I want to play Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner, but it won't fit. All right. Let's do it. Let's play. I got to find it. Hang on one sec here, guys. Uh, 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 uh. Where are you, bitch? Further back, further back, further back. Uh, we're gonna play Children of the Damned. We're gonna play Children of the Damned. I found it! We're gonna do it! Here we are! It's Full Force Radio. Play Dice Bitches. Win yourself a shirt. God damn it, it's the last track of the night. Up the Irons, kids, on Full Force Radio. <laughs>
you the last track before the end of the show tonight. Okay, Dice Bitches is still going. We start again. We're going to hang around until somebody fucking wins Dice Bitches. This is terrible. It's terrible. Can we start with like a smaller seed number? Like what happens? Somebody's got to win, man. Somebody's got to win. My name is Crimson Clyde. If you're still watching, my God, good on you. I don't know how you're doing it, uh, but we're just going to do it. We're going to do it. We're going to figure it out. Oh, spoopy girls. Spoopies everywhere. Jason's like, what? Yeah, I know. He keeps waking up. Everybody has a little bit of beer and they kind of like fade in and out. So somebody's going to win this fucking shirt. First set of tit wins. Right? Well, I mean, that might be... Uh, who's who's still there? We got uh, Al Pacino. We got a, uh, Cherie. We got Eileen. I don't know. But no, no titties for shirts. I don't want to... I don't want to... <laughs> I don't want to force anybody to do anything they don't want. Julia's in. It's happening. People aren't listening, but they're getting their shirts on. Uh, listen, we're going to hang out. Remember, that the broadcast is coming to an end. So if you're hanging out in the Discord, things are going to wrap up. You're going to hear the Steamix. Roll, 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 roll. Roll while you can. Roll in the Discord. Roll, roll, roll your dice to win yourself a shirt. Gently, 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 gently to cover up your tits. I don't know. <laughs> But the reality is, is I'll be here next week. We'll get a theme together. We'll be a little more organized. We're going to start sharing more content, you know, so forth, so on, etc. All these meaningless promises that I make you uh, that get put aside for the sake of the Hive blockchain. My name is Crimson and Clad. Please go to mspwaves.com. Check out the full schedule. Have a lot of fun. Bring some metal into your life. Bring a whole lot of love into your life. My DMs are always open. Please let me know what I could do for you. If not, come and hang out with me on Thursdays for metal and shit talk. Make sure you watch a bunch of the cool, horrifying, dystopian retro future things going on. And uh, if you are a blockchain or, you know, that same kind of aesthetic enthusiast, join me on Saturdays for Cyber Buzz. Uh, I will play a little bit of Synthwave, but mostly we bitch a lot about technology and blockchain and crypto and the crazy world we live in. But as for tonight, I am all finished, guys. Thanks for hanging out with me. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, you are basically the best part of my life and a true cult part of my metal journey. I'll see you next week. Bye. <laughs> Keep rolling. Roll.